So now uh, we are going to start this sociology of health course. And this is our second lecture. Here in this lecture, we are going to talk about the basic concepts of sociology of health. And we have taken unit first and uh, basically it deals with basic concepts like health, illness, sickness, disease and medicine. So now this, this lecture is divided in four parts basically just uh, the, the organizational part of this lecture. And uh, we would like to deal with four different issues in this lecture. The first is, what are the important basic concepts in sociology of health? Then, why do we need to talk about health? Then, what do we understand by the concept of health? And then, what is the basic difference between sociological perspective on health and other perspectives, including biomedical perspective. Now, why do we raise these questions? Because uh, generally we think that health is something which is related to the field of medicine or the field of medical sciences or the field of natural sciences. So talking about health uh, in social sciences and especially in a discipline like sociology is something uh, new, not all of you would be familiar with this, would be aware of this. So here, we are trying to uh, uh, go, uh, trying to uh, uh, address those issues, right? So, what are the basic concepts? See, I have uh, included some of those basic concepts here in this slide. And you see that if we are saying some, but these are not some, they appear to be many. Because when we talk about health, then there are different uh, uh, forms of or dimensions of health that we need to understand the physical, mental, social, and spiritual. Then there's a big concept, concept of health difference and health inequality. Because when we see health outcome, then we find that the, the, the health outcome of two persons are not the same. So that is generally identified as health difference. But when we see those differences at a larger level, at a comprehensive level, then we find that, that there is some kind of pattern over those differences. That means persons belonging to certain groups or communities have somehow similar health outcomes. So that brings into a picture the notion of inequality. So when we talk about health, we need to talk about health outcome. And when we talk about health outcome, we need to talk about health inequality. Health inequality is there. And when you are talking about inequality, that means some people are having better health conditions and some people are having not so good health conditions. So here comes the notion of health rights and governance because whenever you are talking about rights, you need to talk about governance. So the issues of health rights and governance are there. And then when you talk about governance, then certainly whether this is making a positive intervention or a negative intervention. So whether some of the uh, outcome are avoidable or not. And from here you get the concept of health inequity. So it is not inequality, it is inequity. And inequity is a value addition over the notions of equality and inequality, right? And then we move towards a, 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 a corrective mechanism. And here you find the notion of holistic health. So the word health as such is not referring to only one state, rather there are so many concepts interrelated and we need nuanced understanding. Then comes the second concept that is illness. Now again, there is a whole trajectory. Illness is not simply a word like illness, rather it is a phenomenon. In, 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 so, in sociology and in psychology, or, or, or for that matter in the behavioral sciences, we need to understand the state of, of not being well or the state of being sick or state of being ill. So illness is a subjective condition. Then. Uh, from that subject, subjectivity comes another concept uh, that has been defined by me, and that is illness doubt. Now, illness doubt is something which is playing a very important role in the overall trajectory of understanding illness. And then comes the state of sickness. Parsons talked about sickness, and the sickness is actually some kind of social declaration of the state of illness. So illness is a subjective realization Illness is a subjective realization realized at the level of the individual and sickness is a social realization. And Parsons is also talking about the notion of sick role, right? So 
we can see illness, illness, doubt, sickness, and sick row. Then comes the notion of disease. And when you talk about disease, we all have some kind of practical understanding of disease. But two major categories of disease are there, communicable and non-communicable. And communicable disease as of today, I mean, the present context, each of us are much familiar with the idea of communicable disease because, because the, the, the occurrence of this global pandemic, which is known as uh, COVID-19 or the coronavirus has made, I mean, uh, disease an epidemic as, as the most absorbing phenomenon. This online class is, uh, is certainly a, a, is a, is a result of one of the consequence of the, 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 the prevalence of this COVID-19. And uh, till few years back, uh, sociologists, economists, basically epidemiologists have been saying that we have reached to a state of uh, uh, epidemiological transition and the prevalence of communicable disease is almost controlled in the developed part of the world and the world is struggling with the non-communicable disease. The developing countries are witnessing the problems of communicable disease. But what is happening as of today that the communicable disease are back. It's not that the corona or the COVID-19 is the only communicable disease. The world has recently seen AIDS. That is, again, a very communicable disease. And some uh, different, uh, say, uh, forms of this corona, like uh, SARS, severe acute respiratory uh, syndrome, then MARS, a middle East respiratory syndrome sort of things have always been there. So there is a huge, uh, I mean, there is a major thirst on communicable and non-communicable disease. Then there is a state of chronic and acute treatment or disease. So there are certain diseases which, which persist over a longer period of time, that is the chronic. And then there are others which prevail maybe for a shorter period of time, but they may have serious uh, of symptoms or syndromes so that is often identified as acute and uh, in a country like India or for that matter developing countries when we find that there are so many persons who are sick or who are I mean uh, under treatment we find that that this is in a country like India or for that matter any developing country often become chronic lack of health care and treatment system actually transform transform all acute disease into chronic disease. So we need to understand these things. Then we have the concept of medicine. Uh, there are different types of medicine. We know that there are traditional medicine, Western medicine, ethnic medicine, folk medicine, social medicine, community medicine, and other forms of medicine. So what do we mean by medicine? Medicine is a kind of intervention which is, which, which is basically used to alleviate the pain or make some kind of improvement in the, in the, in the position related to deformity or pain or some kind of uh, uh, non-functioning of a certain organ or some sort of that sort of thing. But it is a kind of intervention. And there are different systems of medicine. Then uh, there is a concept of medical pluralism. Pluralism, we are familiar with as a student of sociology. And we see that within the medical system, there is a prevalence of, uh, of, of pluralism. That is, uh, multiple systems are prevailing. So we can see, we can identify allopathic system, Ayurvedic, homeopathic, Yunani, and then uh, several systems prevailing at the household level, that the folk medicine, the home medicine kind of thing. And as of today, as you know, you might have been witnessing, seeing so many videos, right? That when there is a prevalence of COVID-19, that so many people are talking about immunity, then talking about some kind of home medicines. That is the intervention that may be, can, that may be be made at the level of the household, right? So there are things and we need to uh, have some kind of understanding of these things. Then we talk about medical care, the specific medical care. Again, there is some kind of pluralism is involved because there are multiple agencies. There are the government agencies, there are the private agencies. Beyond them, there are several other agencies also which are not identified as the official agencies, but, but you can say that these are uh, 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 quarks. For, for example, quacks, those are not the non-professionals, but in the rural areas or in areas where there is little accessibility related to health, then they, they have been prescribing medicine. Then there are uh, other smaller forms of uh, agencies. So there are I mean, different forms of medical care. Then healthcare. Uh, as a student of sociology, I differentiate between medical care and healthcare because we have a very comprehensive definition of health. So healthcare is certainly more than medical care. We need to understand that. 
and then healthcare practices because several of many social determinants are related to practices healthcare as of today what we are talking about what is the preventive mechanism uh, uh, for protecting ourselves from covid 19 it is hand wash that is sanitation and sanitizer perhaps the word sanitizer has never been used uh, to this scale in a country like india right so there are practices healthcare practices and then there are several indicators like fertility fecundity morbidity mortality then different forms of mortality like neonatal mortality infant mortality under five mortality etc that we can talk about and then we talk about the social determinants and the social determinants are very important because you know biomedical perspective is talking about uh, is focusing on certain aspects related to health but we know that the, those those certain uh, uh, biomedical factors are surrounded by a social environment, a social ecology, and the social determinants are playing a very important role. So what are those social determinants? There are many, but few very important food, then nutrition. We understand the difference between food and nutrition, then water, sanitation, housing, dress, then the larger environment, then other very specific, very pertinent determinants which create inequalities, those are education, then income work then an environment of inclusiveness that is social inclusion and participation so all these factors are actually social determinants of health and we need to talk about these things then there are several processes like medicalization demedicalization corporatization privatization globalization and some of these concepts are there in our syllabus then there are different stages related to health different approaches like the notions of public health community health occupational health etc etc and then we have several information systems like nfhs dlhs nsso different sources of data so i mean in the last five or six minutes i have been taking the names of few concepts which are popular concepts when we talk about sociology of health we need to have some kind of practical understanding of these concepts for having a deeper and comprehensive understanding but as of now Right, I mean, uh, in the because taking in keeping in mind the kind of course that you have, we'll focus on health, illness, and sickness, and then disease and medicine. These five basic concepts, and I think that uh, uh, I'll need three lectures to make you understand these five basic concepts. Right, so this is the larger plan. Now we try to address uh, the basic concept related to health right so uh, the first question is why do we need to talk about health why do we need to talk about health and the answer are many right first is this that health is a basic human right but basic human right of all it's not that that health uh, people were not aware of health or people were not considering health as an important state but the issue is this, that it was not considered a human right or basic human right of all. So when you word, add the phrase of all, then it becomes the most important phenomenon of this 20th century. See, if we differentiate, if we try to understand uh, 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 the, the, the journey of uh, systems of medicine or healthcare, then we find that 20th century is the most important in the domain of health and disease or for that matter illness sickness and all these all these things and what makes it most important is few important discoveries and inventions in the domain of medicine and then much more than that this realization that health is a basic human right of all and how do we reach to this condition uh, we reach to this condition because of this uh, declaration uh, declaration made by universal uh, this universal declaration of human right and it established in article 25 in the year 1948 that everyone has the right to a standard of living adequate for the health and well-being of himself herself and his her family that means each of us has this right to a standard of living Adequate for the health and well-being of himself. 
this is what is known as a, a, as a basic human right. Then the preamble of the World Health Organization also confirms this. It affirms that it is one of the fundamental right of every human being to enjoy the highest attainable standard of health. So it's not just about uh, having health for few because health for few or health for the elites or health for the uh, top segments of the society has always been there. As when, we will, when you will see the different systems of medicine, you'll find that, that, that some interventions, some treatment, some uh, uh, medicine system have always prevailed. But what is very important in contemporary context is this, that now we are uh, uh, acknowledging, we are realizing that health rights are rights of all. And then comes a very important intervention in 1978 in Alma Atta Declaration. It was stated that the goal of health for all needs to be achieved by 2000. So a time frame is there. In 1978, it was stated that, that the goal of health for all should be achieved by 2000. And then what happened in 2000? Did we achieve? The answer is no. But by the turn of the century and the millennium, we prepared another set of goals. And uh, some of you may be aware mm -hmm. of this. We identified that as a Millennium Development Goal, MDGs. And uh, these MDGs basically a set of eight goals. And out of those eight goals, basically five are related to health, right? So that signifies the importance of health by the turn of the millennium. And it's not, I mean, remaining really confined to that. After that, after that, in 2015, we, the world accepted SDGs, that is the Sustainable Development Goals, and it identified 30 goals, and then uh, many out of these 30 are related to health goals. That means health is constantly remaining in the agenda of global governance. So what is this health? Right? Now, we have understood the importance given to the notion of health. What is this health? We need to understand that. And health is a state of wellness. The, 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 the feeling of the realization of being well. Health is, a necessary, health is necessary for the biological, mental, psychological, social, cultural, spiritual, economic, political well-being of all human beings. So it's a, it's a, it's a condition of well-being. It's a condition of wellness. When, when, when the mind, the body, and uh, almost each and every possible dimension of, of, of human being is, is in a state of optimum performance, is in a state of, uh, of, of comfort and, and realization of some sort of perfect coordination. So that is a state of wellness, right? And health is talking about that. But this... This, this, this sense of wellness, as I have described, is basically more individualistic, right? It's more, 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 more perception oriented. And the, 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 the component of objectivity is missing in this sense of wellness. So to compensate that, uh, I mean, a Nobel uh, laureate like Amartya Sen talked about few dimensions related to health. And those are very important. He, tries to explain uh, health or the conditions related to health in, as objectively as possible. And in his numerous writings, some students are joining even now. And in his numerous writing, he talked about the health inequalities, right? And he says that health inequality, that is the differential outcome, is the most basic form of inequality. That means as a student of sociology, we understand the concept of inequality. And Sain says that, that health inequality is the most basic form of inequality. So often we talk about income inequality or racial inequality or caste inequality, a structural inequality sort of thing. But Sain says that, that health inequality is the most basic form of inequality. Now, why does he say something like this? Because he says that, that, that health enhances capability and functioning of human beings. So as a human being, we, have some, we do have some kind of capability. We, we perform certain things, 
right? We realize certain things. So whatever we perform, whatever action we are involved in, whatever acts we are involved in, this is some kind of capability. And that basic capability is enhanced by health. That is why health is important. So it's not just for the sake of having a wellness kind of thing, but for the basic need of remaining human and performing our basic things, we need health and the functioning. Now, the, see, there are the, the human body are always of involved in some or the other kinds of functioning. If I'm speaking, this is a kind of functioning. If you're listening, this is a kind of functioning. If you're uh, concentrating, this is a kind of functioning. If you're eating, if you're walking, if you're even sleeping, all these things are functioning. And if the health is poor, then these normal functionings are getting ad adversely affected. So health is necessary for making these basic capabilities, enhancing these basic capabilities and functionings. Then uh, going beyond this, uh, if you want to see it at a larger level, at a larger level, then health is an indicator as well as necessary condition of all paradigms of development. As a student of sociology and for that matter as a student of social science and for that matter as in, in contemporary world, every person is, 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 is somehow associated, related with the idea of development. All human intervention or basically machine intervention are made uh, to bring some kind of improvement in the quality of life that is generally identified as development. So there are different paradigms of development, different uh, frameworks at different period of time. So we are talking about, uh, at one point of time, we talked about economic development, then there's an improvement. We talked about social development, human development, and sustainable development. But in each of these framework or paradigm, health is a very important indicator of development as well as necessary condition. That means these uh, models of development or paradigms of development are not possible unless we focus on health of the human being because health makes people human resource also right it's not only about being a human a human being but also as 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 a human resource so health is a very important necessary condition it is an indicator as well as it is a necessary condition and so uh, summarizing everything we can uh, say here that health is a is a dynamic state of well being it is a state of well-being, but it is a dynamic. Dynamic in the sense that this state of well-being is not remaining fixed or constant. So the health condition of a person keep on fluctuating. That means there are several determinants, there are several requirements. And if those requirements are not fulfilled, then the state of well-being will not remain fixed. It will keep fluctuating. It will, that is why it is a dynamic state of well-being and makes the experiences of life worth living so we have addressed this is issue that uh, mm, now we now need to talk about what do we understand by health why why do we need to talk about health yes we talked about but what is it that is basically need when you talk about health yes we took up some of those dimensions but yes uh, more theoretical more perspective oriented things we need to address and so when we try to address this question, what do we understand by health, then uh, we can uh, approach to this issue from, from, from certain viewpoints and perspectives. Well, uh, it's customary to distinguish between negative and positive definitions of health and the functional and experiential definitions. So when you talk about health, so uh, there are negative and positive definitions and then there are functional and experiential. So what are the negative and positive definitions? The biomedical definition, that is biomedical is the medical dis definition, that is the biomedicinal definition is also uh, often referred as, that is the dominant medical science perspective, right? The dominant medical science perspective. How, how does this dominant medical science perspective define health? It defines health as, as a state of, of, of absence of disease. Basically, if you go to a, a, a medical person and you, you, you are interested in knowing the state of your health, then, then the doctor will suggest you that, okay, here are a few uh, tests that you may conduct, that you may need to go through. And if you, you find that, or that the results of all these tests are positive, that means if you are not suffering from any of the diseases, that means you are healthy. 
that means that the, the whole perspective of medical science to see health is to examine the prevalence of certain disease if the body and the mind is free from the disease that means that is healthy but this is considered as actually a negative definition of health because we for for realizing the idea of health we are actually uh, looking it looking at it from the prism of disease so this is often uh, uh, not accepted wholeheartedly and a very meaningful intervention is made by world health organization who and when who says that health is a state of complete health is a state of complete physical mental social and spiritual well being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity that means that the, the focus on the second part of the de definition not merely an absence of disease or infirmity right so it rejects it it it, it rejects the idea we are left with 10 minutes it, it says that health is not as narrow as biomedical approach often considers it as an absence of disease or infirmity and it says that health is a state of complete physical mental social and spiritual well being so when we say that complete physical mental social and spiritual well being then a huge set of new things are getting introduced when you try, if you try to understand what are the indicators and parameters of all these physical mental social and spiritual well being then i mean uh, those are very uh, extensive and exhaustive list and perhaps each and every possible component of human life human social life your psychological life or spiritual life is addressed so sometimes even the who definition is criticized criticized that it is too comprehensive it's too idealistic but yes it's true that the, the, the definition given by WHO is a very idealistic definition, but actually it shows you the direction, right? It gives you a direction. It defines the parameter, the parameters that we need to take care of if we uh, intend to make, uh, uh, if we are intended, if we intend to sustain human life, right? So there is a need to examine the WHO definition in a very comprehensive way. But as of today, we are interested in examining the things from the perspective of sociology of health. And so in sociology of health, we are not confined to the WHO definition. We go uh, beyond that. That's why we need to talk about the other things also. And here, the ecological approach, uh, coming from those who are the students of ecology and environment. And they say that, that health is a dynamic equilibrium between man and his environment. So man, of course, man includes, we are talking about man as well as women. We are talking about human beings. So human beings and, and, and their environment. That means the internal environment and the external environment. So there is a dynamic equilibrium. And for these ecologists, this is, is a maladjustment of the human organism to the environment. So wherever there is some kind of maladjustment or some kind of uh, lack of equilibrium between the, the, the human being and the environment, this is a state of disease. And so to avoid this uh, disease, we need to establish the equilibrium. And this equilibrium is not a fixed equilibrium, but it's a dynamic, it's a moving equilibrium, right? Then the psychologist and the psychological approach talks about and says that health is not only related to body but also to mind and especially to the attitude of the individual right as the who definition is also talking about health is physical and mental well-being so talking about the mental this mental is actually taking into consideration the whole psychological approach right and comes next comes the sociocultural approach and what is the sociocultural approach it talks about or it says that health is a product of the social and community structure so health is a product of social structure health is a product of the community structure so this socio-cultural approach is also what is considered as the sociological approach but yes in sociological approach we are not keeping ourselves confined to this socio-cultural we go beyond that also because uh, it's not that we, we, we will not examine the ecological approach or the psychological approach because we in sociology are interested in a comprehensive understanding of phenomena, the larger phenomena. So what is coming into existence? If we go by all these things, then a situation is coming 
and where we can say that that health is man's natural condition it is the result of living in accordance with the natural laws pertaining to the body mind and the environment right these laws are related to fresh air sunlight diet exercise rest relaxation sleep cleanliness right attitude of mind good habits and above all lifestyle now when we are talking about the natural condition and all these things now you think over these things which one out of these is related to disease or medicine you won't find even a single notion related to disease or medicine it is a result of living in accordance with natural laws pertaining to the body mind and environment these laws relate to fresh air sunlight diet exercise rest and relaxation sleep cleanliness right attitude of mind good habits and lifestyle so all these are the positive interventions if we focus on these positive interventions then perhaps we are not we will not get exposed to the problems or the vulnerabilities related to disease and perhaps we may not need medicine as such so there, here is the basic difference between a sociological perspective and a biomedical perspective a biomedical biomedical perspective looks at the things from the, 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 the from the uh, realization of essentiality of medicine or disease but uh, a comprehensive definition of for that matter a sociological perspective looks at disease and medicine as special conditions but health as the normal and the natural condition and yes you may relate it this realization because as of today for the covid 19 what is suggested these are the things which are suggested that the natural living conditions good health good immunity good food exercise exposure of uh, fresh air etc etc so we can conclude this section by saying that a holistic and multi-dimensional study of health and related issue is the top priority of the basic sciences including social and behavioral sciences and sociology is of course one such discipline so when, when we are talking about social sciences and social the behavioral sciences then there are several disciplines basically uh, in, the, in the next uh, uh, lecture you will also get to know which other social sciences are mm -hmm. approaching the issues related to health and uh, illness and disease and we see that the economics is there psychology is there anthropology is there so there are several disciplines but here sociology of health is the one branch of sociology that addresses the various issues related to health and we examine it from the perspective of health and not from the perspective of medicine or disease now comes the last seg segment of this lecture. What is the basic difference between sociological perspective on health and other perspective, including biomedical perspective? I've already referred to some of these points. I'm not left with much time. So as we have stated earlier, biomedical perspective looks at health from the perspective of the, the, the germ theory or the, the perspective of some kind of infirmity or the state of malfunctioning or abnormal functioning of the body some sort of i'm not saying that those are not the the uh, not the uh, uh, prevailing conditions of human life yes of course those are the prevailing conditions of life but the the difference lies in how do we approach how do we approach because biomedical perspective largely suggests um, the trajectory of medicine Whereas the WHO approach suggests that some kind of correction in lifestyle is required. Mm -hmm. And sociological approach basically is going beyond the WHO approach. It talks about the importance of the social conditions, the social determinants, right? Because education as such is a very important factor. Income and actually inequality. Income inequality is a very important factor. And for that matter, social inequality, for example, caste, right? In India, certainly if you go by the, 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 the largest scale data, you'll find that those who are the most deprived categories of people, they are suffering the most from disease and illness. That means the social conditions, social uh, the, the, the structural inequalities are playing major role in deciding the health inequalities. So this problem is examined uh, by the 
uh, established perspectives and in sociology we have functional perspective we have uh, interactionist perspective we have marxist perspective we have Foucauldian perspective and all these perspective help us to understand the different conditions related to health so uh, uh, i think i'm going to conclude this lecture and in this lecture uh, we try to understand some of the basic concepts and as uh, prescribed in your syllabus uh, the first unit is talking about the concepts related to health illness and uh, disease and today i focused on health in the next lecture i'll focus on illness and sickness and i'll have one more lecture and in that i will focus on uh, disease and medicine so uh, by the end of the third lecture you'll be familiar with some of those basic uh, concepts related to sociology of health and you'll understand why do we talk about uh, sociology of health so after that we'll approach that uh, what how sociology of health as a discipline or sub-discipline came into existence so uh, before I